These are 10 supplements that show huge scientific promise when it comes down to longevity. Now, full disclaimer, we're being proactive. We're trying to look around a corner here. A lot of these studies look at rodent model stuff. Some look at humans, some look at fruit flies, some look at in vitro. But in the world of longevity, we can't take anything to the bank. We just won't know. We won't know for a long, long time. So we be proactive and we look at what has promise. So the things that I'm talking about here are things that are easy to get and things that are typically safe and things that just have huge merit. The very first one is one you've heard of before, simple vitamin C. But this is interesting because it's not just vitamin C as a simple antioxidant. There was an interesting paper that broke it down into kind of a different realm. This study was published in Oxidative Medicine and Cellular Longevity. Okay, and it gave subjects uh, vitamin C or placebo. And in this particular case, they were looking at how it would affect the body in response to muscle damage, looking at stress markers and of course, oxidative markers, okay? So they gave this to people that had never worked out before and people that were regular trainers, people that would normally work out. In both groups, they saw huge, huge changes. They saw a significant reduction in what's called melondealdehyde. Okay, melondealdehyde is going to be something that is a huge oxidative stressor. So when you decrease this, you're able to increase endogenous antioxidant production. So malondaldehyde would scavenge superoxide, okay, and it would also cause what's called lipid peroxidation. So lipid peroxidation is specifically fats, like you're basically making fats rancid and affecting cellular membranes. So this is very important for longevity. So vitamin C might just be the simplest bang for the buck when it comes down to basic longevity. Next up is interesting because it's curcumin and it's not because it's anti-inflammatory. This is what's wild. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Functional Foods that put this into an entirely different light. It was a meta-analysis that looked at lots of different papers. I think in this case, it looked at seven different studies. It found that curcumin increased superoxide dismutase activity. Superoxide dismutase is a body's internal antioxidants, what we need internally. Interestingly enough, it only increased it after people had been on it for six weeks. So you need to be on it for a while, but this is a huge review. It's not just one small random mechanistic paper. Additionally, they found that it decreased lipid peroxidation, like I talked about with vitamin C, and increased glutathione peroxidase, increased glutathione levels, another endogenous antioxidant. So it seems like you stay on it for a while and it kind of upregulates your body's sort of natural antioxidants. The next one is one called NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide. NMN is what is called a precursor to something called NAD, nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. NAD is required for cellular function, required for cellular repair, required for DNA repair. It is so critical that if you didn't have NAD, you would be dead within 15 seconds. And it declines as we age. Like if you've ever been to a clinic before, you can literally get like infusions of NAD and it's ridiculously expensive. Okay, NMN is a precursor to NAD and via multiple pathways, it helps increase NAD. At least we've seen strong evidence in the rodent model data with this. And what this potentially does downstream, by increasing NAD, you increase the availability of NAD to do other sort of longevity things in your body, like activate sirtuins, which activate the stress response, which activate antioxidants, and it's this downstream pathway of essentially youthfulness, right? So if we look at the studies, there's one in Frontiers in Nutrition. It's pretty interesting and it was looking at telomeres, and it was looking at telomeres of mice and humans in sort of this pre-aging stage. It was looking at their mononuclear cells. There is an increase in telomere length in both rodent model and human model mononuclear cells. Well, does that mean anything? It takes a lot to increase telomere length, even in in vitro stuff. So it's fascinating that, and you couple, couple that with, again, the like rodent model stuff, it's pretty darn intriguing. I put a link down below for a company that has a really good NMN if you're interested. I've talked about them on this channel before. It's a company called Verso. They have a product called Cell Being that has nicotinamide mononucleotide in it. It also has transresveratrol. They work really well together because transresveratrol is a very potent antioxidant that has very strong effects. And there's even some evidence with sirtuins there. So I definitely recommend it. So that link down below saves you 15% off if you wanna give them a shot. 
They've been around the block. They've got a huge reputation in the longevity space as a very good quality product. It's something that I recommend. They also have another product called Clean Being, which is one that helps support autophagy, helps support sort of cellular recycling, helps potentially support mitophagy and mitochondrial health. So they have those two flagship products, but in this particular case, it is their cell being that has the NMN in it. So that link is down below if you do wanna check them out. They are a sponsor on this channel, but they did not dictate what content is in this video. I just think it's a valid recommendation based on what I'm talking about. So that link is down below. Next up is seaweed extract. And specifically things like fucoxanthin that are in seaweed seems to have some pretty strong promise. There was a study that was published in the journal Marine Drugs that looked at seaweed extract. And it found when it came down to like cellular senescence, which is something very important. It's sort of like a cell self-arrest and sort of like a proxy that a cell can create of itself. It's pretty complicated to talk about in one video, but fucoxanthin may have a positive impact on this. Additionally, seaweed extract seems to activate the NRF2 pathway, which increases natural antioxidant production in the body as well. Also a potent effect on sirtuins, which we talked about previously, and overall DNA repair and autophagy. So a lot of research still needs to be done on seaweed extract, but considering the mineral density and the polyunsaturated fatty acids that you get out of straight seaweed, I would argue you could also just eat seaweed and get a strong benefit. Next up is ginger. Now you can take ginger in a powder form, food form, or supplement form. And there was a study that was in advanced pharmaceutical bulletins, it looked at type two diabetics, and it had them consume two ginger tabs or a placebo. And the results were quite fascinating. After two months, there were decreases in tumor necrosis factor alpha and decreases in overall CRP, their C-reactive protein. Now the mechanisms here are a little bit unknown. Okay, we do think that it has something to do with gingerol and zingerane, which are very specific compounds in ginger. So you can go on Amazon, you can look for these compounds, you can get a concentrated ginger extract. Essentially, we know it has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties, but it seems to be kind of happening at a higher level versus what you might get with just like a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Speaking of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, bromelain, which is essentially pineapple extract, seems to be very potent with this. And again, slightly different avenue than you would get with like ibuprofen or aspirin, which is great for like pain relief, yada, yada, but modulating inflammation from a longevity perspective is very important too. This study was published in the journal of the Pakistan Medical Association, and it says, and I quote, bromelain equals non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as an anti-inflammatory agent, but with fewer side effects. Apparently, it seems to do this via what is called the arachidonic acid pathway. If you've heard people talk about, for example, seed oils being inflammatory, uh, whether or not you want to agree with that argument or that statement, one thing we do know is that they affect the arachidonic acid pathway and modulate prostaglandin E2 and various prostaglandins. Prostaglandins dictate the pro-inflammatory state or the anti-inflammatory state. Okay, and when you impact the arachidonic acid pathway, you can pull a big lever for inflammation or anti-inflammatory effects. It seems as though bromelain impacts this quite significantly. More research needs to be done, but bromelain is super, super cheap. And if it is as potentially anti-inflammatory as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, that could be huge for your pain relief, but it could be good overall systemically if it's kind of flipping a switch one way. Next up is one that you know of, but it's kind of interesting. There is a study published in scientific reports on vitamin D, where they took vitamin D uh, deficient subjects, gave them a 50,000 IU bolus of vitamin D, and it was a game changer for them. Modulated inflammation, increased their antioxidant capacity, their ability to neutralize antioxidants actually went up just by increasing their vitamin D. So I would recommend something like cod liver oil in this case. So you get omega-3s, you get the vitamin D, and you get the vitamin A all in their synergistic form. I think from a longevity perspective, it makes more sense to take cod liver oil than a synthetic vitamin D. Next up is one you've heard me talk about, but you've never heard me talk about it from a longevity perspective. And that's going to be green tea extract, not just EGCG, but straight up green tea extract. There's a study in biomedical and environmental sciences that took a look at the effect of green tea extracts, potentially when it comes down to longevity. They took mice and they put mice on a very high fat diet. And when they put them in on this high fat diet, it increased their levels of malone aldehyde. Remember this oxidative stressor, essentially. It decreased their levels of sirtuins, which are associated with longevity, right? We've talked about that. It decreased their PPR alpha, which is 
how you essentially oxidize fats and it increased what is called manganese superoxide acetylation. When you acetylate something, it means you're kind of, in a way, activating it. So in this case, you are activating something that was a huge stressor. Superoxide dismutase is a good thing, but when you have manganese superoxide dismutase, essentially you're activating things at the wrong time. It's complicated, but green tea reversed all of these effects. Okay, so the increases in essentially oxidative stress, the decreases in the ability to utilize fats, all of that reversed with green tea extract. So in essence, green tea helped regulate the stress response and ultimately helps with DNA repair, autophagy, mitophagy, and you name it. But what's interesting is green tea is great, but the next one is theoflavins. Theoflavins are in black tea and things like oolong tea, so slightly different category than traditional green tea. With a study that talks about this, it was published in an experimental gerontology, they were looking at fruit flies, but it was interesting. So they found that when fruit flies took in theoflavins from black tea extract, their lifespan went from 51 days to 56 days. Okay, they're flipping fruit flies, like who really cares, right? Well, it still matters, okay? Because then what they found is that when they put fruit flies, like exposed them to high amounts of fat, it shortened their life down to 15 days, right? High calorie, probably a good amount of like saturated fat for those little weird little flies. Okay, decreased their lifespan down to 15 days. But when the black tea extract was in the mix, it bounced them back up almost 50%, almost doubled their life up to 28 days. So like you take a fruit fly that would live for 51 days, it's healthy. You give it black tea extract, 56 days. Make it unhealthy, it lives for 15 days. Still give it an unhealthy diet, but give it black tea and it lives for 28 days. I think what this tells us is that there's something there. Like diet-induced oxidative stress is a very real thing, so we need to countermeasure it with other things. And the last thing I wanna talk about is less about a supplement and more about something you can do. There was a study published in Haleon that was so interesting, and I have to mention this. Intermittent fasting. Okay, they took white rabbits and they measured from a longevity sense. They essentially saw that when they put white rabbits on intermittent fasting versus prolonged fasting, intermittent fasting actually made the rabbits potentially live longer, but it increased FOXO3 and it ended up increasing their downstream antioxidant capabilities more than prolonged fasting. So before you think that you need to jump into a super long fast to get a longevity benefit, all you might have to do is just restrict your eating two or three days per week. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.